It's time to let the darkness take control. Before I begin, I think it's important to give you a little bit of background. I am currently 20 years old. But when these events occurred, I was between 15 and 17. I had never downloaded Tor and used basic software as I'm not very tech savvy. Nor did I really believe in the hype of the deep web. I never found a red room nor convincing murders. But I do have some messed up stories. One in particular revolving around airplane crashes. This site had hundreds of black box recordings, and you could listen to them uncensored. They contained recordings of everything from plane crashes to hijackings. I'm a morbid person, so naturally I listened to a few of them. If you have a weak stomach, I don't suggest ever seeking out this site. You could hear people crying, praying, screaming, in addition to the sounds of crashes and the impacts and gunshots. The worst was a pilot speaking to what sounded like himself during what he communicated to be total engine failure. He was the pilot of a passenger plane carrying four families out of China. There are small descriptions of the planes and pilots and what happened under each audio file. In it, you could hear him praying, the controls making frantic sounds, and his frantic, panicked voice slowly receded to a ghost relative of acceptance. I will never forget the absolute fear in his voice, while he spoke what I assume was Chinese, and I couldn't make a sense of his words. His tone told me exactly what he was doing. The movies don't give an accurate description of fear. They don't convey the helplessness of a human trapped in a flying tin can in the sky as it falls back to land. I felt as if I was with him. As I heard the plane make impact, I witnessed his final moments through my headphones, and I heard the moment that little black box stopped recording. The description said the plane that crashed held no survivors, and there were over 40 small children on board. I don't know the details of what happened, since the site was just brief descriptions and audio files, but the voices I heard were real people, and it will haunt me for a very long time. This was fairly tame compared to what I found next. Human trafficking, the cattle ranch. Cliché, I know. Everyone and their mothers has some story about human trafficking from the deep web. No, I don't have men come to my door to whisk me or my family away. However, I found a human cattle submission site. Now it is entirely possible that the site was fake and plastered onto the darker crack of the alley that in the internet is just for lols. But by no means am I here to tell you that everything I saw was 100% real life sites with bogeymen up to no good. But as far as creep factor, it was pretty high. Someone was sick enough in their heads to make the site and pay to keep it. Now upon clicking the link, you are brought to a large red flashing 1999-esque text reading Welcome to the ranch. And just below you could browse the cattle. Images of women looking from ages 16 to 45 with brief descriptions of what they were used for. They only had their first names displayed. And besides the name was voluntary or involuntary. The descriptions were volatile, explaining that specific women were used for breeding and meat or play. The meat was to be pre-cut to your specifications, packaged discreetly, and mailed to you within two business days. Those determined for breeding were given ages, how many children they had had thus far, and brief stories on their life before the ranch. 
The descriptions even went so far to say who gave them to the ranch if they were listed as involuntary. Many were donated by husbands, boyfriends and families looking for money, revenge or some other unexplained reason. And lastly, those given up for play. I have a strong stomach, but the descriptions of this made me wretch a bit. These people were to be sent to the ranch to learn how to be pets. These women had no available names. All of them were marked as involuntary, and each had a description of what the donor wanted done to them. Graphic descriptions of sexual assault, physical tortures, and amputations. When the women eventually died, the page listed what they would be expect to be done with the corpses. It didn't end there. At the very bottom of the page was a link to a PDF file that could be printed and mailed or submitted online. The form was for donation of cattle. On it, you could list why the person was there, the basic health of the person, voluntary or involuntary, and who you were to the person, and additional notes if you had any. The owner of the page proudly left his or her own note that all cattle was discreet and they dealt primarily using Bitcoin and PayPal. Refunds were prohibited and ended on a cheerful note of enjoy your meal. I don't know the validity of the site, but it made for an interesting find. This adventure led to the contemporary death of my old Dell dinosaur. It was about a cannibal cult. This is my final entry. I don't know if this cult is exactly cannibalistic, but they alluded to it. I got interested in a creepy pasta story called useless.avi. It was pretty popular back when creepypasta was still a big thing. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, useless.avi was supposed to be a video of a woman, naked, tied to a bed and left alone with a chimp that was emaciated and abused. As one would expect, the chimp graphically moors and eats her. The video cuts to a naked man in a mask, licking a toilet, and then blackness. The video cuts. I had heard a lot of rumours about the video and decided to look into it. Being in high school and working part time, I had a lot of free time over breaks. In the evenings, I visited forums and chats dedicated to debunking Creepypasta, and it all pointed to the video being fake until I came across a thread titled How Useless Can You Be? I don't remember what site it was on. I pretty much just randomly clicked and crossed my fingers. Anyhow, a user mentioned seeing the video before it was removed on the site and had saved it. Too good to be true? Yeah, it was a hoax account, but it luckily prompted an active member of this cult to post. And post he did. He had created a web page for the cult he called Revision of Humanity, or something to that extent. On it, he had many videos created by the group meant to be art installations to provoke thought regarding human behaviour. The cult had simple origins and were self-proclaimed freedom thinkers out to wreck the US government. However, they took a dark turn when a member wanted to leave, leading to useless.avi, or at least a rough interpretation of it. The poster had the useless video amongst many other short videos. They were all fake and the members acted as actors, except in Useless. The woman in Useless was a member that wanted to leave. The chimp was a pet of the leader who failed to care for it, and lost his temper at it. The woman was truly killed in the video, and it was graphic, although extremely grainy. The poster made mention that the majority of the cult had disbanded after the woman's body was found, and the leader and 10 members 
were tried and convicted for a slew of crimes, including, but not limited to, murder, rape, petty theft, and animal neglect. The poster went on to say that he wanted to recreate the cult, and left on a message board that, if you do not understand, then you are part of the problem. Terminate yourself for salvation of the masses. I laughed it off as just another poser, and assumed it was a hoax until I went to exit my browser, and found that my screen had frozen. Fed up after five minutes, I resorted to holding down the power button. It would not shut off. I unplugged the damn thing, as it only had power when it was plugged in. The battery was crap, and it didn't shut off. I plugged it back in and tried to exit using the escape key when the screen started violently flashing error messages, and then finally flashing black and white with the words, part of the problem, slathered all over my screen like sunscreen left on the hands of a toddler. The speakers started blaring static with chanting voices that I couldn't make out other than a low hum. My screen suddenly went blue with what looked like random codes, and then shut off. I was unable to turn it on for almost two weeks. For a month after that, every time I tried to access a web page, the computer would redirect me to the cult page. After about a month, it all sort of stopped. Smart troll using a programmed virus? A genuine cult? I don't know. I don't concern myself with it much. It makes for an interesting story, even if it is boring to deep web standards.